Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to talk about electrostatic forces. So we're going to start by recapping our understanding of non-contact forces. We're going to look at the concept of electric charge, and then we're going to take it back down to think about the structure of an atom and how that contributes to this idea of what we call the electrostatic force. We're then going to look at how objects gain or lose electrostatic charge and then thinking about having done that how do these charged objects behave so firstly let's take another look back at non-contact forces now if this is something that's not familiar to you at the moment um it would be well worth going back and having a look at my video types of forces to understand what we mean by non-contact forces but essentially we're thinking about the forces that can be applied without any contact between two objects that is can act at a distance okay so we can look at magnetism looking at gravity and then the focus of today's video which is the electrostatic force which you can see in these bottom two images so what is the electrostatic force well let's take it back to think about this idea of electric charge now this may be a word or a term that you're familiar with at this stage but the reality of it is is that it's a word we can use or a phrase that we use but actually it can be quite difficult to understand Essentially we say that electric charge is a property of a substance or an object. We might be thinking of something that's a big thing that you can see or touch or hold in your hands or even down to the level of particles smaller than an atom. Um it, this is still something that that can apply. Now the reality is it is hard to to define exactly what charge is beyond saying that it's it's a property of a thing. It is something that this this object has, but it is easier for us to see and understand its effects. it doesn't mean we can't know anything about it um and and so we're going to unpack that a little further but in order to do that it requires us to take a look at the structure of an atom now you may or may not be all that familiar with the structure of the atom at this stage um but so here's a a bit of a simplified image that we can use so atoms the are the building blocks of all matter they are kind of the smallest particles that can exist or at least that was the concept when we first devised this idea of the atom. We could really recognize that what we call as atoms actually have smaller parts inside them. And then if you go further into studying physics then we see they've got parts inside them and inside them and it actually becomes quite complicated. But for us today we're going to focus on this idea that there are three main smaller pieces of an atom. We call these subatomic particles because they are below or smaller than an atom. Okay, and this we use that word sub like you might in the word submarine to refer to below. Okay, so these are three subatomic particles. So we've got the protons, we've got neutrons, and electrons. Now these subatomic particles have this property we call charge, electric charge. That protons have a positive charge, that neutrons have zero or a neutral charge, whereas electrons have a negative charge. So that is protons and electrons have opposite charges to one another. We can see here in the center of this diagram we see something that we refer to as the nucleus. That is um it's this kind of central part of the atom where protons and neutrons are glued together and kind of stay in this middle part. But you notice that the electrons we've just referred to aren't there. The electrons rather are orbiting in these paths around the nucleus. Now, this image that we're looking at here is a a bit of an outdated but simple and easy to understand version of what we understand the atom to look like as we go further in in your understanding of science that we will add more detail to this um and and make see how it's actually a bit more complex than this but for now this works for our purpose that we have protons neutrons and electrons protons and neutrons together inside the nucleus that electrons orbiting around the outside of the nucleus and with lots of empty space in between so this is the structure of the atom so we're going to think about this that then these subatomic particles are actually what's going to be responsible for what we understand to be the electrostatic force and so when we're thinking about that we're saying okay let's think about it in terms of what these charged objects are like so like charges that is positive and positive charges negative and negative charges repel one another similar to what we understand that like poles of a magnet will do okay so we see that they repel or we call that the noun for this is repulsion 
Whereas if we see opposite charges, positive and negative, we see the opposite behavior, that they attract or move towards each other, just like unlike poles of a magnet will do. So they attract, or we call that attraction. So like charges will repel, opposite charges will attract um, in the same way that poles of a magnet will do the same thing. Okay, and so now we can see then that this has implications. So this has further things that, that flow on from this in terms of how objects behave. But how do we get these positive or negative charges for big objects that we're dealing with? Um, and so let's look at now th this example that we have here where we've got um, a cloth and a plastic rod. Now, what I've, I've got on this image here is lots of little pluses and minuses to represent that there are lots of positive and negative charges on both of these objects at the start of this situation here. But that this charge, electrostatic charge, or these electrons, as something that can transfer between these between objects when they rub against one another by friction. So that is these little minus signs which represent the electrons that as the cloth rubs along this rod that then some it picks up some of these electrons that some of them move from the rod into the cloth making the cloth have an overall negative charge and the rod has an overall positive charge. Okay so we have this imbalance of charge because electrons have moved from one object to the other. But we've just looked at this idea now that, um, that objects, once they have this overall charge, that then they start to interact with each other in different ways, with attraction and repulsion. So we can see, if we come back to think about this, this charge, that if we take an object that has a balance of positives and negatives in terms of charge, if we add electrons, if, if it gains electrons, that it has a negative charge, if we start from that same object, but it loses electrons, it has a positive charge. Notice for each of these little rectangles that's drawn there, they still have the same number of plus signs or positive charges, but the electrons, the red minus signs, are the things that can be lost or gained. And as they're lost or gained, that they give this object that overall charge, positive or negative, depending on exactly what has happened. And so, then saying, okay, so what? Well, what happens is that when these objects are now brought near to each other, we see particular behavior. We see that objects with like charge will repel one another. You can see this with these, the, the, the positive and positive and the negative and negative in the, the, the left-hand side of this image. The two objects that have positive charges will move away from each other, as will two objects with negative charge, when objects that are neutral or have no charge would just hang straight. Um, hanging down in, like you can see there. Whereas if we have objects that have opposite charge, we can see that they're going to attract towards one another. So they're going to pull towards each other because these opposite charges will attract one another. So we see it at the subatomic level with positive and negative charges on that. We see it on a big object level in terms of things that you can see in front of you and, and hold in your hands that like charges repel um, opposite or different or unlike charges will attract and so then we see objects behave accordingly. Okay, so we looked at what we understand of non-contact forces, that electrostatic force, which is the focus of this video, is just one of three non-contact forces that we want to be familiar with. That we look at this concept of electric charge as a property that objects or substances can have that's hard to define but easier to see its effects comes back to the concept of the structure of an atom as the helping us to understand why objects end up with a charge and seeing that the parts of the atom, the protons, neutrons and electrons and their charges. And we see that then um, when we have these objects with charge that we have a force that exists between them where like charges will repel, unlike charges will attract and then we can gain and lose electrostatic charge based on when objects rub together that electrons can be transferred from one object to another and in doing so that then we see the objects themselves start to attract and repel one another. Alright, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.